welcome back drifters today it's a new day and we're working on the 67 mustang now part of the reason i've been gone for a little while is because i've been running into a lot of issues finding some of the steel parts that i need for this it has to deal with some of the manufacturing that's being done because most of this is done over in taiwan but i'm going to go in detail on that on a totally different video this video what we're going to be working on is replacing a section of the frame rail now the reason that we're doing this is because well i can't work on the other pieces until i get the sheet metal in so yeah let me show you what we're doing so if you'll notice here this section of frame rail is completely rotted out i mean it's literally a hole it is a just a big hole it rusts through over here and if you notice here there's been a repair before it was a very crappy repair, but a repair nonetheless. I mean, this radiator support has seen better days. I mean, this is just this is just bad, right? And look at this plate they put on here. They just welded this plate on here, drilled a couple holes. It's just not great. So luckily, I've already got a spare piece of metal that we're going to use to make a whole new frame rail. The issue that I'm running into now is what I need to do is remove the upper and lower control arms so we can see if there's any rust in between that area because there's a spot there where sometimes rust can build up. The spot that I'm talking about is inside here. Now, inside this spot here, there's going to be a section where normally there would be some stuff to prevent water from getting in there and sometimes it can trap water and create rust so this whole spring perch lower control arm upper control arm all that needs to get out of there so i'm going to go ahead and do that real quick so we can get a better idea what the frame rail looks like underneath the suspension so let's do it so for some reason this guy put on these weird spring compressors and they're going the opposite direction this is like a spring expander i don't know why he did that but i've got an actual spring compressor over here that we'll be using um, so yeah. So I guess there's nothing left to do but, uh, pull this stuff. So I was running into a little bit of issue with getting the spring out because, uh, it's under a lot of tension and I wanted to be very careful, but these idiots that installed this section, they've ev evidently replaced this apron before, uh, because they welded the shock cover to the new apron. Let me show you. So you can tell these aren't factory welds because they're stitch welded up the sides. But if you'll notice, they also stitch welded the dang cover on there. It's supposed to be unbolted because I should be able to just take this and pop it off. But we're welded on there. So, uh, yeah. So now I get to have fun trying to get this spring out with that cover in the way. Uh, cause it's too late for me to go and grind this thing off. So, uh, yeah, should be fun. Okay, so this took me a little bit longer than I was planning. I don't know why I didn't assume that a car that's 50 to 60 years old wouldn't have rusted bolts, but whatever. We got them out. Uh, I left the strut tower brace thing in there because basically that thing's getting cut out anyway. I'm doing a fully custom suspension setup on this thing, but that's totally different day. Let me show you the area of the frame that I was concerned with. We still need to get it cleaned out, but I'll show you where it typically hides rust. All right, so when you're looking in here, you'll see that this is the section that I was talking about. There's like this weird coating they would put here from the factory way back in the day, but a lot of times this would just trap moisture and hide rust underneath there. So I need to know if this metal is still good under there or not, because the section that I have for the patch goes all the way from here forward. And I really don't want to have to cut that if I don't have to, because it's much easier to cut up here. So I'm going to go ahead and wire wheel all that dirt out of there and we'll see what we're left with. I gotta say, for once on this project, I'm pleasantly surprised with what I found. Let me show you. The base metal actually looks really good. It's a little dirty right now, but I've got it all the way down to bare metal, and I don't see any pitting or rusting or anything bad. So it looks like that protective material actually did its job. What's funny is it actually covers up these little drain holes here, and that's part of the problem is that water would just sit in here where normally it should be able to drain through there. So, uh, for whatever reason, though, that material, I'm assuming, is probably not good for you, but, uh, definitely kept the rust away. So, surprisingly, there's no rust under there. I was expecting to find a lot worse than that. So, this is good. It means that we can only cut the section where the damage is and repair that, and it's much easier because it's in front of the sway bar. Um, so, yes, yeah, so this is going to make it a little bit easier. It's still going to be tricky, but, you know, we're just going to do it one little step at a time. So, uh, yeah. So now that we know the frame rail is good at that section, what I need to do is focus on removing the other part of the frame rail that's bad. 
But before we do that, I'm going to need to brace this somehow because right now there would be nothing holding it in position because right now the thing holding it in position is the radiator support, which that's also being replaced. So when that comes out, this whole thing could just flex and go all over the place. Let me show you what I mean. So as of right now, this thing is holding in both sides of the frame from that point to this point over here. And inside here, we've got these little cross braces that are also holding it together and basically triangulating the whole thing. Now, when we have to cut this out, we're gonna be removing the radiator support as well. So that crossbar there is gonna go away. So there's gonna be a lot of flex between these two joints and we don't want that. So over here is where the actual problem is. It's this nice little hole we got here. But what happens is on the other side, there's that piece of metal they did a repair and it goes about to about this point here. So most likely we're gonna to have to pop this off. We're gonna to have to remove this piece here and then eventually cut that. I'm also gonna remove the fender apron the radiator support and all that fun stuff. So it's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of cutting. So yeah, I guess I'm gonna be doing a lot of cutting and removing pieces right now because that's pretty much where we're at. But before I do that, I'm just gonna weld up some square tubing between here. But I think I'm just gonna do the whole thing in a time lapse because uh, otherwise this would be really boring if I showed you all of it because it's gonna take me hours, most likely. So yeah, so I'm gonna get to work on that and uh, I'll see you when it's done. Sometimes I really do be like that. <sighs> there we go. All right, that'll hold. Okay, so that was a ton of work. It took me a few days to get all this thing cut out properly because I was trying to be careful in some areas and other areas, I just didn't care, it was easier just to cut. But the situation that I'm running into now is basically figuring out where exactly this rust ends, how far into the strut tower that's actually gonna go, um, or shock tower, I guess. But the problem that I ran into is that the replacement sheet metal doesn't exactly match the OEM. Let me show you what I mean. So one of the important things to notice is this little cutout here. That's for those little crossbars that run across there underneath the car. And this is where it should be. But you'll see here that if I line up those bars there, they are off by quite a lot. So technically I could just fill that and recut and make it all fit, but it's just gonna look kind of janky. So luckily my rust repair is in front of this. So as long as I cut before this notch, it should be okay. Ugh. My glasses. Sometimes I really hate having glasses. These things can be super annoying, but you see the dilemma that I'm running into. So I don't wanna leave any rust. So what I'm probably gonna end up doing is cutting the frame, seeing what's inside and how it looks, and then just kinda of playing it by ear once we get that thing cut open. The only thing is when I do that, this whole frame could technically split. Luckily I got that cross brace in there holding it together, but I'm still worried about it being you know, able to just flex and move all over the place. So I guess now, I just need to cut that and we'll see what we get inside and just kind of go from there. So I don't know if I'm gonna end up getting the radiator support in in this video or not, uh, <laughs> cause this has already been a week and uh, it's been like two weeks since I uploaded, so we'll see. But anyway, let's get to cutting and see what we get.
So what I did here is I just took this measurement, I went across and I marked a couple spots where I got the measurements on this side. And then I did the same thing on this side over here, just to get a couple good ideas of where this thing's meant to be. So that when we go to take this thing off, that we're putting this in the correct spot and that it's completely straight, that it's not pitched one way or another. So yeah. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna get in here with the cutoff wheel and just start cutting this thing apart. Um, and then we'll grind down all these little welds and get it all revealed so we can kind of see what's going on. And then, yeah, the fun part's going to be making sure that we get this frame extension the exact same size as the old frame. Because I really don't have a good point to measure from because it's all rusted away. So, uh, yeah, this should be fun. Ah, yo, look at all the shit in here. Holy crap. Look at all that. Oh, so much stuff. Holy cow. Well, we got the front half out, so that's pretty big win, but now comes the hard part. So the hard part is going to be lining up the new frame rail with this, making sure this is completely square, and then just making sure we get it in the same place and space. I got to remove the rest of the radiator support over there, but we'll get that in a second. Well, there's no turning back now, but luckily we got this thing cut out. It's looking pretty good. The only thing that I'm running into is an issue of the measurements. Now, what I'm basically using for my measurements is a whole bunch of things that I took earlier, but I just want to demonstrate one thing that kind of shows you where there's a little bit of a discrepancy between the replacement part from Taiwan and the OEM part. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing is taking a measurement from the base of that angle to this straight point here, and it's about 16 and 5 eighths. Now obviously I don't have 16 and 5 eighths, but I'm going to measure what's left here and we've got about 3 inches. So that means that we know that from this point forward, we need to have at least 13 and 5 eighths. But there's a little bit of an issue. Okay, so when I take this measurement here, we're getting about 13 and a half. So that's about an eighth inch off, but most likely that's from the actual cutoff wheel. So here's how I fix the problem. So basically all I did is I took this and I measured until I got to 16 and 5 eighths and then did a mark. So now the next thing I did is I set up the laser level so it's hitting right on this edge here. And then we're going to run that beam straight across and we're going to see just how far our measurements are off. Okay, so I'm going to get a laser right on the edge right there. And then I'm just going to go and make a little mark here and just see how close we are. This mark up here is the mark that I measured just by using measurements. And this is the mark using the laser. So my measurements were good. So now all I got to do is make a cut. I'm going to cut to the outside of this line here. So I got a little bit of space to grind with to make sure we can get it exactly perfect. And also just in case if I cut a little cockeyed. So yeah, time to cut this. Okay, so you can see the mark there. I've definitely cut it a little bit longer than what it needs to be. And you can see here that the line is just a little bit over, so that's good. Especially since I didn't quite cut that perfectly straight. So I think as I grind that back flush, this should line up pretty dang good to the line over there. So, yeah. Well, bad news is I gotta go and uh, I'm gonna have to return to this when I can. It's just been a chaotic couple of weeks for me. Like, I have been pulled five ways from Sunday and it is just taking me forever to do this work just because I haven't had time to get in here and do it. Um, so I apologize this thing is taking so long to get done, but I am really trying. I'm, I have not stopped trying to get this thing done. It's just a matter of not having the time to do it. So. But I'm going to try to get better about that. Uh, the next thing that I need to do is actually clean out the inside of these frame rails. I need to get this thing completely fitted and welded in. So, yeah, I'm going to try to get that done in this video, but we will see. Now what we got to do is figure out how we're going to get it in there. I needed something to cover me because this stuff, if it gets on you, it does not come off very easy. I got to be real careful not to get this stuff in my eyes. But I'm sure if you got a thick enough piece of wood, it would work just fine. It will. I'm gonna like rub on it. A couple little drips here and there. The lamb skin did leave a little bit of fiber inside there. Ooh, that is stinky. Do not smell that. Oh God. 